word of God is very, very true. The word of God is very, very, very real. Before Jesus was even born, hundreds of prophecies were said over about his life. Hundreds of them. And Jesus fulfilled every single one of those prophecies. Every single one of them. Everything that was said about Jesus, the life of Christ, when Jesus came, he fulfilled every single one of those prophecies. Every single one of them. But now, when Jesus himself came, he also gave some prophecies. He also gave some prophecies. Everything that Jesus predicted came to pass. Everything that Jesus said would come to pass. When the time came, it came to pass. It came to pass. So when the Bible says that Jesus Christ will descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of an archangel and with the trumpet of God, you know that's going to come to pass. When the Bible says that every person who's ever lived will stand before God in judgment and books will be opened and we will be judged according to our works, you know that's going to come to pass. You see, judgment, right, is so real that even if you die, God will raise you from the dead just so you can stand before him in judgment. That's how, the, how, how real this is. But you see, that being said, Never, it was never God's intention for men to find themselves in hell. There are people in hell right now as we speak, and they're there for eternity, and there are people in heaven right now as we speak, and they're there for eternity. God doesn't choose where you go, you choose for yourself. God doesn't send anybody to hell. You send yourself. Nobody goes to hell blindfolded. Anybody who's on their way to hell know exactly why they're going to hell. Without even having to ask them the question, your conscience itself tells you why. The Bible says that Jesus has given the Holy Spirit to convict the world of sin. Anyone who doesn't have a relationship with God as your loving Father through what Jesus did on the cross, you already know. You don't need anybody listing a list of sins for you. You already know. Any person who is not right standing with God right now they know it I didn't say anybody who's not perfect no because that's not what we're referring to anybody who doesn't have a relationship with God they know and anybody who has a relationship with God through what Jesus did they also know that Christians are perfect? Obviously not. I'm just saying that Christians are forgiven. I didn't catch what you said. I didn't hear what you said, so... Am I saying that Christians are better than others? No. Hi. I'm just saying that Christians are forgiven. has been to the cross of Christ the Christian has confessed that Jesus is the son of God 
the Christian has also confessed why he says that Jesus is the Son of God. Because Jesus was from the dead, right? That's the Christian faith. The Christian recognizes that he is a sinner who needs to be saved. And the Christian totally depends on what Jesus did on the cross to reconcile him to God. So we're not saying that Christians are better than anybody. We just say that the Christian is forgiven. The Christian is washed in the blood. Because really, the difference between going to heaven or hell is Jesus Christ and his cross. What Jesus did on the cross will determine whether you go to heaven or hell, whether you put your faith in, in him or not. Someone will say to me, but I give to charity, I'm a nice guy, I'm a good person, you know, and that's fine. That's commendable. Well done, you. But you can never be justified before God by what you do. And believe you me, when you close your eyes for the last time, when they sign that death certificate, when the ECG flat lines, when they lower you six foot down into the grave, when your soul appears before God, you're going to need some justification. Or you're going to need a lawyer. When you stand before God in judgment, you, you, need, you need a lawyer. You need a lawyer. Because God is so holy. God is so righteous. God's standard is perfect. God's standard is so perfect that if he gives you 613 laws, if you keep 612 and offend in the 613th law, you have offended God. There's absolutely nothing that you and me can do to reconcile with God. We can only depend on what Jesus did. Jesus is that reconciliation man. Jesus is the middle man. Jesus is the advocate. The cross on which Jesus was crucified was for you. It was meant for you. It was meant for humanity. It was meant for... That's how... God judged the sinner. The excruciating pain and the grave that was all meant for humanity. But Jesus came. He died on the cross for you and me. Jesus came. He was buried in that grave for three days. Easter Sunday, right? For you and me. Jesus came and Jesus was risen from the dead on the third day. Historical fact. Cold hard fact. Jesus was risen from the dead. How does a man who's been dead for three days come back to life? How does that work? How does a man who's been buried for three days come back to life? Easter Sunday, right? Easter Sunday, right? He came back to life on the third day. The very same power by whom Jesus was risen from the dead is available to live in your heart today. 
this is a message of hope. This one doesn't offend anybody. <laughs> this one can't offend anybody. Love and hope and faith doesn't offend anybody. <laughs> God's got nothing but love for you. That doesn't offend anyone. It's a message of hope. God's got nothing but love for you. God loves you. He really does. God loves you. Praise the Lord. There is nowhere in the history of humanity, absolutely nowhere else, where you hear of a man being risen from the dead after three days in the grave. Nowhere. Absolutely nowhere. Praise the Lord. Only in the Christian Bible, only in the Christian faith, only in the Christian faith, is where you find a man who's been dead for three days being brought back to life and the, that act when God by the power of the Holy Spirit brought Jesus back to life he did it on your behalf yes he did he did it on your behalf difficult to understand because you see you even yourself you didn't give birth to yourself somebody gave birth to you you didn't name yourself somebody gave you your name so it's not difficult to understand when Jesus rose from the dead he did it for you as your spirit hears the voice of the living God right now, your spirit is becoming alive. Just by listening to what I'm saying. As your dead spirit man is hearing what I'm saying, Jesus is risen from the dead, your spirit man is coming alive right now. Because Jesus himself said that the time has come for the dead to hear the voice of the living God. And they that hear the voice of the living God shall live. So as you're walking past, I speak to your spirit man. By the voice of the Son of God, that Jesus is risen from the dead. And as I'm speaking to your spirit man, your spiritual man comes alive. That's how powerful the gospel is. Two point three billion Christians in the world today. I mean, if if they say that the world is if the world is seven billion, we're still working on the five billion. Three billion Christians in the world today. You telling me that two point three billion people are wrong in picking up a Bible and reading it? You telling me that two point three billion people are wrong in picking up a Bible, read it, hear the voice of the living God, hear the voice of the Son of God, and become alive spiritually? As I'm speaking right now. As my voice travels, as you hear what I'm saying to you, I speak to your spirit man. 
I speak to your spirit man with the voice of the Son of God that your spirit man may come alive that you may come alive spiritually again the reason why people struggle to hear God is because they're spiritually dead but the gospel message has come to you today to make you spiritually alive I was preaching in another town the lady says to me have you seen God like how can do you see your conscience do you see your thoughts She's asking me that because she can't see God. But that's understandable because it's a spiritually dead person. Do you know you could have won a million pounds and not even know about it until you turn the phone on? When the phone becomes alive again and the text message comes in, that's when you know, oh snap, I've won a million pounds. It's the same thing with humanity. As long as your spirit man is still dead, as long as your spirit man has not been brought back to life, you will never know what God has for you. So that's why the gospel message is coming. And I speak to you today by the voice of the Son of God. And I speak to your spirit man that your spirit man may become alive again. In Jesus name I speak to the spirit of man that the spirit of man may become alive again that we may know the things that are freely given us of God God's got nothing but love for you God loves you but you can never experience or enjoy that love until you're made alive in your spirit man again until you are born again praise the Lord that's why the gospel message is coming to you the gospel message comes to you so you can hear the voice of the Son of God so you can be made alive again in your spirit man that's the power of the gospel is alive the word of God is real the word of God is full of power full of power the word of God into contact with the word of God has always been left with the impression that this goes beyond just black ink on a paper this really is the word of God the Bible is really is, is really the word of God Even hardened criminals have been known to find the book of Psalms and read it for comfort. Even hardened atheists have also been known to come to the Bible on their deathbed. We all know Charles Darwin, right? Charles Darwin, the father of evolution, Charles Darwin. Do you know that when Charles Darwin passed away, his favorite book was the book of Hebrews, a Christian Bible. Charles Darwin. Did you know that? Charles Darwin.
Charles Darwin came to the faith, but they would never say it because somebody was looking to get paid from the theory of evolution. You know? I mean, if people came from monkeys, why do we not have any monkeys ever, ever, you know, ever, um, evolving today? Think about it. Jesus said that the hour is coming now is that the dead should hear the voice of the Son of God and they shall live again. That's the whole point of the gospel message. That's the whole point for the gospel message. The whole idea of the gospel coming to you today is so that you can be made spiritually alive in your spirit man again. Chapter 5, 25, it says that, For I say, verily, verily, I say unto you, that the hour is coming, and now is, when the dead shall hear the voice of the Son of God, and they that hear shall leave. He's not talking about the physical body, because the physical body, we can see it, it's alive. It's talking about the spirit of man. If you ever want to come alive spiritually, hear the voice of, of the Son of God. <laughs> 